Okay guys, so here's a video that we've been putting off for years because technically we used to do a lot of Power Wheels races and we kept it on the low down. Um, I'm not going to get into everything we did on our buggy builds because they were very fast, like 16 miles an hour. But I've been seeing on the Modified Power Wheels page on Facebook, um, these people talking about putting drill batteries in. Well, today I'm gonna to show you guys the proper way to do it. So let's get right into it. So here's the long story short is I got one of these Milwaukee 18 volt chainsaws because my 16 inch bar limb saw, the gas lines totally just ate themselves. Um, and to me, it was a great value because A, I needed a chainsaw and it comes with this. A monster. This is a 12 amp hour lithium ion battery. Yeah, 12 amp hour, it's huge. So to start this off is some, some people are putting in, I'm sh they're showing pictures of putting in these little teeny 1.5 amp hour batteries. That's a great way to just destroy your battery because it's going to be draining it so fast because it's using two 550 series motors. So. What I need to do is explain to you guys, there's only certain models and brands that you can do this with. Power Wheels brand and Peg Perigo do not use circuit boards in their builds. If you're using like a big toy screen country or some of these off brand ones on, on eBay, they have circuit boards that are low voltage and if you put more volts to it, you will fry it. Um, talk about going from a hero dad to a zero dad, break the brand new toy. So first you need to figure out, does my Rhydon have a circuit board? Because it will smoke it. At minimum, you're gonna lose remote control if it has it. You're gonna lose sound box, you're gonna lose lights, because those are usually like three volts, five volts. So if you guys have a Power Wheels brand, typically it's like a Jeep or a Mustang, this is the perfect vehicle to do this modification on. So some of the things you're gonna need is obviously a 18 volt battery because what you're going to get is 50% uh, more power. So it's going to take your five mile an hour yawn of a ride on to seven and a half miles an hour. Um, it's a pretty safe modification that's not going to um, fry your gas pedal because if you go 24 volts, you are risking welding your gas pedal shut. Um, I am not the safety freak. I do crazy stuff with our kids ride ons and twice now, the gas pedal has welded shut and he crashed into a fence. So picture yourself um, in that situation. Just use common sense, guys. So that being said, I'm gonna bring in the camera and show you step-by-step step how we take a stock Power Wheels nine and a half amp hour battery to a 12 amp hour lithium ion and boost the speed by 50%. So before I do that, I guess I'm gonna explain what you're going to need. So you're going to need your stock battery. Um, this one's junk. I wouldn't really recommend getting um, a good battery and tearing it apart because we're actually going to give this thing a lobotomy. We are going to peel off the top and we need this connector unless you want to go ahead and cut off the connector on your ride. You can do that. I don't do it because a lot of these are trade-ins and I click, flip them, I clean them up and resell them. So I try to leave the stock wiring harness as it is. So we have tons of junk batteries. If you guys don't have a bad battery, you could probably go to your local scrapyard or recycling center and more than likely somebody has turned in one of these $70 batteries because it uh, doesn't hold the charge any longer. And I've got tons of videos explaining how to charge Power Wheels batteries correctly so you don't damage them. So I'll, maybe I'll put that link up above right here. So check that out. Um, so let's get started on what we need. You are going to need some crimpers. Um, there's an all-in-one stripper, cutter, and crimper. We don't really like these as much as a dedicated crimper right here. It just gets a lot tighter of a crimp and you don't want the battery connections coming out. You're going to need a screwdriver to pop the top. You're going to need cutters. And the biggest thing is people don't do is add a overload protection. This is a fuse. We're using a 40 amp fuse. 
Um, we're going to actually cut this wire and we're going to crimp that in. I've already got one made up and I just put some duct tape on here to kind of hold the wires in place. Um, but this is what we're going to build and I've had a lot of requests for step by step because some people just can't uh, quite figure out all the pieces up to the puzzle. So I'm going to bring in the camera right now. We're going to give this battery a lobotomy and I'm going to show you guys exactly what you need to do to build this boosted Power Wheels battery. Okay, so you've got your Power Wheels battery and if you look real close, you can see that there's a glued on top here. So what we need to do is we're going to retrieve this battery connector out of there. So very carefully take your screwdriver and start prying. Now you got to be careful because you can damage this. I mean, it's still usable. I've damaged quite a few of them, but it's usually because I'm in a hurry. Okay, so once you get your top off, this is what it's going to look like. These are the caps to the cells, and this is the connector itself. And over here, which you can't quite see, which is the nuisance of this whole system, and this is only Power Wheels does this. They have a built-in circuit breaker, and if you have um, nuisance tripping, it's because this thing, it kind of wore out. and going up hills and it stops for a second and then you hear a click and then it works again. It's that built-in circuit breaker. You can't really do anything. You're better off just to pitch this battery and get an aftermarket universal. So next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your flat tip screwdriver and you are going to gently manipulate it up and out like so. Now, now you can see it's loose in there, but it's still all connected. So you're going to get out as much wire as you can. And what I usually do is I take some end cutters here and I'll pry it out as much as I can and cut it. Cut one at a time. Okay, so this is what we were after. This is kind of like the pearl inside of an oyster. So any wire that's damaged, you're going to want to back it off so that when you take your strippers and you strip it off, you don't want a whole bunch of extra. So you want about a half of an inch. So this is the next step. We are going to prep our connector. I'm just going to cut that one off and strip that down. Now this wire is actually kind of black in there so it might have had some overheating. So this is going to plug in basically to your stock wiring harness. So the next step is on the negative which is the black one and it even shows it right here on the connector top you are going to take one female blade terminal and crimp that in place get a good crimp test it make sure it's a good bond now on the positive side, we are going to crimp this butt connector. Yes, I said butt. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so coming out of the butt connector, you're going to put half of this fuse. And this particular brand, um, it's got a remo removable ATF or automotive type fuse. And we are using a 40 amp. Typically a Power Wheels would be a 30 amp, but you're using a 40. So we just cut that guy right in the middle. Going to strip off about a half of an inch. Off of each end. So on one end, and it doesn't matter which end it is, power is going to flow both ways. We are going to crimp, and this is a jumbo one. This is actually a really thick gauge wire, so it barely fits into uh, my connector here. The other one that I did was 12 gauge wire, and this is a 10 gauge wire. So I'm technically having a little issue here. But I can see that the wires all the way through so I'm going to go ahead give that guy a crimp now to make this work inside the Milwaukee battery is if you look on here there's a positive and a negative they're helping us out here they're telling us this is positive and this is negative so that we don't switch them because reverse polarity would be bad news so we like to actually use these female connectors and we take it and we're just going to take our lineman pliers and we're going to squish it so that it's flat like that. And in essence, that's just going to plug right in. And then when it's time to charge it, you have to, it, it's a little bit of a, uh, rigged connection but that's the only way to make this battery work um and then you just plug it into your charger in the wall so we are very close to being complete unfortunately i don't like how this connector is probably not going to go in there very good oh it fits in this one pretty good got that in there give it a nice tight crimp <clears throat> I like how that one moves, so I'm going to give it a crimp on this side too. Okay, so the one thing we haven't done is on our negative, because I'm doing this step by step. So we're going to take our linemans again, and you're just going to give that a crimp. So, because this is the 12 volt or 12 amp hour that I've already done. I'm going to compare it next to the 9 amp hour, which it's not as long and it's not as tall. But I only have one of these because if you buy this itself, this is a $200 battery. So you're better off buying it with a tool and a charger. So what you're going to do is you're going to plug one end into the black of your battery connector into the negative. And the red goes into the positive. It's clearly labeled. And just so that these don't come out, we like to take some duct tape. You can use electrical tape probably too. Just take a little section of tape, put it on there. Maybe even two pieces, but it, it, it holds the wire in there. Um, you can see on this one, I kind of just put it on top and it's pulling out. So you actually want to get some of the wire too, because that's normally if that comes out, the kid's going to come and bother you when you're trying to do a watch football game. So that my friends right there is a power tool to power wheel conversion with a safety feature of the fuse. All you got to do is pop this into your ride on. And your kids will enjoy some faster run time, so you'll be a hero dad.
guys like this video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because we're going to start sharing a lot more how to's and uh, backyard garage hacks. The next thing, the kid will get used to seven and a half miles an hour. And then we're going to talk about switching gear ratios and motors. So stay tuned for those videos. And again, thanks for watching. Thank you.